Hi, hello, welcome back. Now, now that we have seen that Euler Lagrange equations are equivalent to Newton's second law, and we have seen the principle of Hamilton of a stationary action, it's time to apply to an example where we see the benefit of this principle. The benefit of knowing that nature tends to stationary actions. Consider a block of mass M on an incline. This incline is free to move, there is no friction among any of the surfaces. I want to calculate the acceleration of the plane. This is a problem that we can solve using Newton's second law, but I will use Euler-Lagrange equations to see that you might want to have these equations in mind when solving pro problems in classical mechanics. In this physical system, the plane will move left while the block will move right. The velocity of the plane, horizontal to the left, and the velocity of the block will have horizontal and vertical components because the block will be in contact with the plane as the block moves to the right it will also move down because i have the plane and the block i will call x1 the horizontal position of the to the left of the plane and x2 the horizontal position to the right of the block the relative distance between plane and block is x1 plus x2 in its motion, the block will fall in amount x1 plus x2 times the tangent of theta. With this, let's write the Lagrangian. The kinetic energy of the plane is 1 half of capital M times x1 dot square. The kinetic energy of the block is 1 half of M times the horizontal velocity x2 dot square plus the vertical velocity x1 dot plus x2 dot square tangent of theta square. The potential energy of the block is mg x1 plus x2 tangent of theta, and the potential energy of the plane can be considered zero. It does not change through the process, so I can choose the origin to be there where it is. In any case, because it is a constant, once I proceed with the derivatives in Lagrange equations, it goes away. Look that in this method it's important to write clearly the coordinates of the particles, to write then the velocities. Now, let's apply Euler-Lagrange equations to this Lagrangian. Look that there are two variables, x1 and x2, although they are related through the center of mass, so I'll apply Lagrange equations to each one of them. The partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x1 dot The time derivative of this, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x1, and the same for the other variable. The two are the differential equations that, after a bit of wibbly wobbly math, we get that x1 dot, two dots is mg sine theta cosine theta over m plus m sine square of theta. Now you can get this same result applying Newton's second law. That's an exercise for you to do. May the Lagrange equations be with you.